Hello again, it's time for some new upgrades on the car. Now I'm moving on to interior upgrades and I have started with installing red seat belts. The seat belts were bought used on a Facebook marketplace and they were absolutely disgusting. So be sure to check that out before buying used stuff. It took me three attempts to rinse them myself and I also uh, dropped them off for a professional cleaner to make them in the condition they are in right now. And they were also from a 9961. I did not know there was a difference between 9961 and 962 belts. But the one belt does not have the connection for the uh, airbag or safety systems, uh, which deploy if you crash. So I have ended up moving the actual belts uh, over from the new uh, holders or rolls to the old one so I can just reuse that. So now I'm gonna show you how to uh, change old belts. So you have to start with this back panel. So it's just to take a pry like this and put it on top and uh, gently pull them out. As you can see I've started on one side and uh, pretty much finished that already. So then I can easily see where the tabs are, which makes it a little bit easier to pull out. Uh, you can also see on this picture where all the tabs are located. Uh, so it's easier for you to pull out uh, interior pieces without ruining the fasteners. So I'm gonna start with this little tab here on top. The bottom is two just push pins. And the bottom is uh, has a lock on it, so I'm just gonna push out the two bottom ones. Then you also need to remove this Phillips screw at the top, so you can move this out of the way to get out the rear panel here. Then I'll take the speaker, which is held in with two. Torx bolts. Just unclip the speaker wire. Then you need to take off this uh, seat bolt, which is in Draco. And then the only bolt that's left is hidden inside here. It's pretty hard to see. And you can see the little location of it on the other side here. If you just look through this opening here behind the belt, it's just enough room to get in a Phillips screwdriver to take it out. Then the left is just various tabs uh, around this panel and it's also pushed down into the floor in the front. So that should be the last place you, you take it apart or you remove. That panel is always. Then we can loosen this bottom attachment of the rear seat belt. There, all the bolts for the belts are attached with 17 millimeter screws. Then it's this entire top rear piece, which is attached by around six or seven tabs. Uh, you can see two of them here are broken. So I'm gonna go and plastic weld them before reinstalling the panel. There was a similar story on the other side too. 
So either they're just broken because of time and brittleness or uh, someone else has removed this panel for some reason and uh, broken stuff. Or I might have broken them now for that matter, but they definitely felt more... Uh, it definitely felt pretty loose when I took it off. So I think they were broken before me. You can see the uh, first piece I took out here that it has seven different attachment points. And the other one is only missing two actually. And this one is just a clip that uh, I can just put back in. And this one I need to plastic weld. So it's not that much work. It's just gonna bend the tabs a little bit to make sure they are straight. Now about half of the attachment attachment point is uh, is uh, back in place. Now I'm just gonna try and build up a little more here, just melting and adding on layers. It's almost like manual 3D printing. see the original one and that's the one I melted now so hopefully this should do the trick all right clip is back in place and it feels pretty sturdy now that the panel is fixed, the only thing left to do to get out this rear belt is to take out the last two bolts. The last one is kind of hidden beneath the foam here, so it's kind of hard to see. And then this belt is kind of like slotted into a groove here. So we just slide it out. And then it's all loose. And now comes the most fiddly part where you have to transfer the belts from one roll to another. So, and the the problem with this is that if you roll them all out and then let go, you ruin the spring. As far as I've understood, so you can't reuse it. So it could become kind of expensive. So I think I'll start with the new red ones. So I lay them out the same way so it's easy to know which way they go in. Then when you come to the end, you can see the end of the roll here. And then you just have to push out the belt, belt from the back. And then inside here, there is a small, just a plastic piece that holds it in place. So then you just remove that and pull out the belt. And now to make sure it doesn't spin back in, I put in this and then gently leave it like this. And it's ready to be, to put the black one in. Now I do the same thing for the OEM belt. If you can't get it out, you have to hold it in the same angle 
as it's attached in the car and then it's easy to pull out. Here you can see that it's attached in the same way on this one. And you just have to make sure it's routed in the correct way when you take it in and out. I can't quite get to it so I'm gonna use some small umbracus or like a pick thing to get behind the belt and pull it out without damaging the threads or anything. Feels very easy in the start but it gets surprisingly heavy when you've been holding it for a little while. There we go. Then you just put back the thing with a little plastic piece in, pull it tight. Alright, then that's ready to go back in the car. I will keep this OEM belt also, so I will just put that back on the one I am not going to use. See the old belts and the new belt, the last one. Let me just slide this metal piece here back in the groove. Make sure that the foam is not push pushing on the belt, so we'll slide in and out easily. Then the black one, black bolt has a spacer on, which makes this be able to move. So that goes on the top. And then later I'm gonna torque them to 15 newton meters. I'm gonna do all the bolts at the same time so it goes a little quicker. See if I can sneak in this little screw down here. a lot of foam on both sides, it's pretty hard to kind of have to push away the foam to be able to get there. All right, then the rear belt is back in. Then comes another very fiddly and very over-engineered part. The only point of it is to make the belt go up and down, but it's like a huge box and it's attached with clips so I'm gonna try and reach the clips with the small screwdriver and just generally pulling out <sighs> finally and there's one, two, three, four clips here that you can have to bend out and then you can pull it out. And there's also a tab here. Extremely annoying thing. <laughs> All right, but it's out. The next thing is to get off the front seat belt. So first you have to disconnect the battery since this is connected to the safety system. And then you need to Unscrew this bolt here, this bolt here, and this bolt, and also unplug this clip here. There's an orange tab that you just pull back, and then you pull out this whole plug here. It can be kind of uh, hard to get out, but uh, just move gently back and forth, and I'll pull out. Then the front belt is out too, so we go 
upstairs and switch that one. This one has actually felt a little bit slow, so I'm gonna vacuum it properly and maybe put some uh, lubrication in it too to make sure it glides easily in and out. The front ones, they're slightly different because there's a metal bar, so it's slightly more difficult to push them out too. It can be pretty fiddly to get it back in, so to make sure that you have a good grip. The edges here are kind of sharp, so it's kind of painful to hold them for a long time. Then, slid in the metal bar again, attach it properly. Let me just slide it in nice again. And the last red belt is ready. Then we just reverse everything that we did. Start with putting back the belt here. The silver bolts attach the belts and the black bolts attach or the rolly thing, whatever it's called. And the black ones attach the Attachment points. And then you have to remember to twist it one time so that the buckle is not facing this way but that way. Then plug back in the airbag uh, plug. This goes in a lot easier after I put some WD-40 in it. So I think I'm gonna do that to the passenger belt too. It's a lot smoother. Then we torque all the bolts to 50 newton meter. Then I can do the two of the three in the back too. The last one I have to wait till I have the panel on, so I have to pull it through first. All right, then it's time for the fiddly part of getting everything back together. Start by putting the belt through here. Now all the tabs are fixed, so everything should uh, attach as I did before. Okay, broke off the tab I fixed and didn't quite get the right angle here. There we go. Gives me a little more wiggle room. I'll go back and attach these points again before I try again. That's why I hate taking 
in and out interior pieces. It's always something getting stuck and breaking. All right, take three. There's one thing I do have to say about Porsche and interior. Every single of these small attachment points have like foam surrounding them. And there is like soft material between every single thing that touches each other. So I don't think I've ever worked on a car where they have put more time and energy into making this car nice and comfortable and quiet. So I think this interior has uh, had a more bad rep than it deserves. But there is some bad quality plastic pieces, unfortunately, that kind of ruins the overall impression. It's really hard to get all these things to line up at the same time, I have to say. All right, I think third time was the charm. Now everything feels very solid. There's two bolts basically here. There's a longer one that goes in here and the shorter one that goes up here. I'm gonna put this back. I've also added a little bit of felt tape here to minimize any chance of sounds from this area. So first you put up the top one, kind of clips in, and then the bottom one. And everything is nice and snug here. Then comes the biggest panel. Oh. Not always as easy to get in. Most difficult thing here is there's a clip here that needs to go on top of something and there's a clip here that goes down in the bottom so you kind of have to pull up and get those two clips in and then everything should fit back in place relatively easily so i'm just gonna try and put push these up What is the best way to do this? Uh, I think it must be to do this panel first. Then even though this one is on the inside, you can kind of like slide it down into it. And then do that to the last. So, but yeah, I like to take off as small amount of panels as possible. So that's why I just kept this on at all times and it works to do it the way I'm doing it too. <sighs> Just a little more basil. Then we have all the clips in. <sighs> then we can take the long screw here that goes into this little cubby. <sighs> Make sure I don't drop it. 
would be extremely annoying now. Okay, that's in. Then I guess I'll take uh, this. Then I can torque the last two things here, which is this. Also 250 newton meters and this last belt here. Alright, and everything is tor torqued up properly. Then we just put this small plastic cover back on. Then it's just uh, connecting the speaker and attaching the little uh, two screws here. Bolt belts and interior pieces here are in place. Last panel. One, two, three, four, five clips that goes in this place here. And then two spikes that goes in. That should be a pretty easy one to get in, hopefully. All good. Just a little bit of vacuuming first. To get the subwoofer in, just two torx bolts and connecting this clip. Voila! All done. mentioned the overly designed huge glob here that moves the belt up and down and I've actually found an upgrade for this. This thing actually consists out of one, two, three, four, five different pieces and put together they rattle and really does not function that well. The upgrade piece costs 10 bucks for two items. It is the GT3 Equant and it weighs one sixth of the weight. It actually functions better and I think it looks better too. Here you can see the original one, huge, chunky and radly when you drive sometimes. GT3 one, really sleek, small, very simple design. No sounds. Very nice upgrade. Just installing the final piece here. The little GT3 clip. Just clips straight on here. All right, let's see the finished result. I actually have one small upgrade too that I've done. The floor mats that I have are Lloyd's and before they were a weird, ugly, orange kind of things. But I just found a red marker that um, has the color that fits my brake calipers perfectly. So now the brake calipers fits the turbo script floor mats. And also of course, my brand new seat belts. Some of you kind of have this silver, black, and red theme. And I think this red accents make a huge difference in an old black interior. <laughs> kind of brightens up and gives it some, gives it more detail. Red belts front and back. And also the GT3 adjusters. Part number in description as always. So, I 
everything is done installed. Are you a fan of the red accents in the car now with the turbo logo and the red seat belts? Comment below. I am a big fan. I hope you enjoyed the video and it was useful. See you next time. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.